How's everybody doing tonight? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Glad to be yeah, back. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. I'm back for another study. Going through verse nine, or I'm sorry, chapter nine tonight. Revelation chapter nine, man. We're moving through this stuff, guys. Um, had some good studies. So let's just keep it going, man. So let's open up with prayer tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to ask, I want to ask Brother Doug to pray us in tonight. How about that? How about okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to fellowship and to better get to know the word. Uh, we pray you anoint the word and have the Holy Spirit guide us into understanding and wisdom and teach us and so we don't go astray. Uh, we're here because we love you and we want to get to know you better. Uh, we can't wait to see you in person. Mm -hmm. uh, these days have us all looking up as we should. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, looking up indeed. Amen. Let this be the, let this be the year. <laughs> man, we hope so, man. We hope so. We're ready to get up mm -hmm. out of here and be with our Lord, man. Amen. I think about how think about how amazing that's gonna be. We're flying in the sky, man, meeting them in the clouds. Mm. Oh man. It's amazing yeah. stuff, man. It's amazing stuff. All I'm right. Scared. What's up? I'm scared of heights. <laughs> uh, you I won't be. be. You won't be not not when that <laughs> comes. <laughs> in the clouds. Uh all right, so it looks like we got 21 verses tonight here in uh, chapter 9. Let's see. We'll just split this thing up, man, and I guess we'll do 5, 5, 5, and then the last person will do 6. So, Cody, you can start us off, man, with the first 5. All right, let me uh, put our screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as a smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them given power as the scorpions of the earth have power and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing any uh, neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to, <clears throat> and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was, was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Oh, wow. Ooh. Thank God it ain't me. <laughs> man. <laughs> Sound like some monsters coming up, man. Let's see. Brother Thomas, you got anything? to add in on those first five monsters from the pit the bottomless pit um i don't know what uh i guess that's hell the bottomless pit or is that some sort of, i don't know they call it the abyss i think um but uh verse four makes me think of those crazy environmentalists again I think they'll be quite happy with uh, verse four, saying that the locust. Well, I was talking about the locusts. I think that because uh, they usually eat grass and stuff, but mm -hmm. I think they'll be uh, they'll be eating us <laughs> or not us, but uh, not us, <laughs> not us, but but the, whoever's left there at, the, at this time, um, other than the people that have the seal of God in their foreheads. That's the end of verse four. But uh, everybody else that. They're they're in for a world of hurt. It seems like, uh, according to these first five verses, pretty specific. In verse five, they'll be, they're only going to be tormented five months, which is kind of interesting. But I heard that the average normal life life cycle of a locust is about five months, from May to September or something like that. 
Um, they usually live really? like apartments. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. That. that is interesting. Huh. Yeah. How about you, Doug? You got anything to add in on that? Right. Now the uh, 144,000 will have the seal of God in their foreheads. Uh, and we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. But I, wa- I was just wondering, are the only way the tribulation saints are uh, going to be saved is through their testimony and being beheaded? Uh, but so far, all, all we've heard is that it'll just be the 144,000 and obviously the two witnesses, uh, Moses and Elijah. Uh, and I guess that's up for debate, but I think mm-hmm. Enoch's out of the out of the picture as far as that kind of the contestation goes. So, no, yeah, it's sounding like it's just going to be the 144 thousand male virgins that that won't be to me but i'd like to be corrected because i don't want to see my future brothers and sisters go through go through so much uh if you know what i mean yeah definitely sir (laughs) excuse me um you got anything to add cody well there's a cross reference here for the pit um Isaiah fourteen fifteen hmm. kind of answers Thomas's question on where it was. Oh, uh, <clears throat> verse fifteen says, "Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit." So I don't know if <laughs> uh, taking it for what it says, I don't know if if hell is oh, on yeah. the side of the top side of the pits. Um, the well, commentary. Well, the thing is, it, well, the pit is in the center of the earth. Right. So, if they're if they're coming out of the pit, I mean, the, if you look at the commentary on here as well, you know, it says it has no top or bottom; it only has sides. Sides. So. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, when we of... talk about when we talk about the pit, I mean, I mean, to me, I, I've always uh, looked at that. And that's that's what hell is. In the center of the earth, mm-hmm. right? I don't know. It almost comes mm-hmm. acro- like that. Uh, not to get into no conspiracies, but if you guys ever heard of the hollow earth theory, I know Thomas has. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so right. it it almost kind of sounds like that. Um, mm-hmm. I know it's the common belief though is that there, there's a there's a core in the center of the earth that's supposed to be super hot. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that could be the same thing or not. I don't know. Oh, well, that, that's science fiction, isn't it? it yeah, are you talking Hollow Earth or Middle Earth? Both. The hollow Earth. Yeah, the whole. Uh, I don't know, kind of like a hole that is hollow in between, not full of the molten core, as they say. But I don't know. I'm just. Oh yeah. yeah. That's just what it. You know, it's we're kind of getting into that kind of idea. When I read this, is what I is what I imagine. Um, obviously, none of us have a full scope of the earth inside and out um but mm-hmm. it's it's interesting stuff basically it's so it, it it makes you wonder how long are they if they're coming out of the pit they can't be it's coming out of thin air right how long have they been down there are they down there now you know like what's there's a lot of theories again theories of underground tunnels mm-hmm. and things like that you never know what satan and these fools been up to um i think it's in job you might know doug where, where satan says he was going to and fro um, yeah in the earth or something like that or on the earth something he says i can't think it off the top of my head but it's where satan asks or god asks for satan where, he, where he's been so who knows man i mean he could they've been here forever they could set up all kinds of stuff underground that we don't know about you know just depending sure. on how deep it can go and there's also been all kinds of stuff like underground they've put in speakers in big tunnels and you can hear screams or things like that and they come up with all kinds of reasons it could like i said it could be anything i'm just saying mm-hmm. these things are coming out of the, the pit how long they've been down there is my question and it's kind of scary you know thinking about it they're just sitting <laughs> under there right now just waiting <laughs> yeah that's the deepest hole that's ever been dug i think it's in the russian yeah. Yeah, area it's about, mm-hmm. it's almost eight miles deep that's and they can hear this 
screaming type mm. sounds coming from there. Oh, they I freaked him out and they quit drilling. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I saw that video too. Definitely, I mean, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd, I'd be spooked too. You know what I'm saying? You you dig that deep, and if you hear you hear screams and stuff coming out of there, that's probably mm -hmm. shattering all all their uh, beliefs that there is no God. Huh? Oh yeah, you know? yeah, go what? <laughs> They're not gonna be talking about that on it's the like, news. Whoa, we, right? Yeah, they're not gonna talk about that, and then they're gonna stop drilling. They want to go ahead and block that out. Yeah, yeah they, evolve they that. Stopped, <laughs> they ain't stopped drilling. They they said they stopped drilling. I I like to believe they kept on looking. You know, we too dang curious to just let something go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Humanity way too curious. They ain't gonna just let that go. Uh, that's I mean, funny. not but not. I mean, really though, I, I see what you're saying. Cause that's funny too. But I mean, for people that are like atheists and uh that want to come up with any excuse not to believe that there's a god mm -hmm. yeah. you'd be surprised you'd be surprised when people will block out of their minds they'll try to block it out but a thing like that you can block yeah. that thing out you know what it's i'm saying it's, it's the same thing with nasa um before that was formed they were they were more concerned with uh looking at the, the bottom of the ocean Right. And then they stopped looking at the ocean and went to space. And I'm like, well, what'd y'all find down there in the water? Now you, right. <laughs> why y'all trying to get out of here so bad? <laughs> trying to go to Mars and stuff. So. I mean, and you know what? And you, <laughs> <laughs> good, you good know, point. I, that's a good, that's a really good point. Yeah. And, and you, you think about like Leviathan, you know, you think about how, uh, yeah, the, like the, the aquatic reptilian, you think about the cherubim, that's a, that that's what Satan was. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah. that that could have that could be a big connection right there. Yes. All right, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get out this water, man. Let's go up. Let's go up instead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't tell him nothing. <laughs> anyway, Don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, let's uh let's continue on here. Let's see, brother Doug. Let's go with this next five, man. Take it from there, yeah. brother, from verse 6. All right. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns of like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And there were, and there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. Kind of doubled down on that five months thing there, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Wow, good point, Thomas. Well, it's, it's just like a coincidence, maybe. I don't know. Oh, no, definitely. No, not that's the way definitely coincidence, not coincidence is God's yeah. way to remain anonymous. No. Ain't no such thing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just the uh. <laughs> In their faces, whereas the faces of a man, and they had hair as hair of a woman, and their teeth were as teeth of white. Dude, that is terrifying. Think about what mm. that's gonna look like, dude. Like, can you just even think about that in your mind? Well, it's like I was saying before, man. This stuff sounds like something straight out of a, 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 a apocalyptic type movie. You know, like it's it's crazy, man. And just the stuff that's gonna be coming out of there. <sighs> And five months, whew, that's a long time, man. It, it, it may mm. seem like nothing, but shoot, it's a man, long time. Time. <laughs> it's yeah. nice and slow, tortured. Like, oh my goodness, shoot, five months, one month, <laughs> two days is a long time for that. I ain't trying to go through none of that, <laughs> right? Mm. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, it's gotta be terrifying, man. Like, and if you take this book literally, like that's really gonna happen, dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. You People think are gonna uh, be like, "What is this, dude? It's gonna be, it's gonna be like something straight out of a movie, dog." I was gonna say, uh, you think verse six is like 
I always picture somebody like jumping off a cliff and then just landing on the ground and not dying. Like he's trying to kill himself, so he like runs mm -hmm. off the cliff and then he hits the ground and then he's hoping to die, but he, he just wakes up with more pain. That's pretty yeah. crazy. I've seen a I video. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say I seen a video like that, but I don't want to show it because I know last time I showed something, <laughs> it no, wasn't no, King okay. James. So I was like, uh, I gotta find it then. If I, all right, y'all keep talking. <laughs> Let me see, I'll find it. You know, they always show these uh, these animated of what what's gonna happen kind of deal. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. So there's probably going to be guns still at this time, right? Like pistols and stuff. Do you, does this mean oh, like yeah. if you put a pistol to your head and pull the trigger, like the bullet's not going to do anything like during this yeah. time? Or? Yeah, you're going to botch it. It's going to be, you're going to botch it. And that's so crazy. That, that's probably, that's probably, that's going to be, you're going to be worse off botching it than just like, yeah, from whatever these creatures are that are coming out of the earth. Like you mm. might as well just go ahead and, Go ahead and buckle down and just get ready for the ride. Don't be trying to botch it, dude, because you're just going to mess yourself up even more. People yeah. are out here right now, man, trying to commit suicide and botching it. And, mm -hmm. they're, and they're making themselves a vegetable for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Because they don't want to live here on this earth no more. Think about how how bad, how much more worse it's going to be then. You're going to try mm -hmm. to botch uh, or you're going to try to uh, kill yourself. And it's going to be nothing but botching. <laughs> All wow. around, everywhere, man. It's sad. Yeah, they're really messing themselves up. People, like you said, people that are like jumping off of cliffs, trying to kill mm -hmm. themselves that way. They're gonna, they're probably gonna come up with the most ridiculous ways to die, and not gonna be able to die because death is gonna flee from them. Yeah, all they gotta do is uh, get saved now. Right. Yeah. That's all they gotta do. They don't want to do that though. They don't want to do that. They want to be the gods of their own lives. They want to um, be the boss of their own lives. And it, to me, it just, uh, I mean, I really don't have any words for it, man. I mean, we can go on forever about this, about this stuff, how people should get saved, man. And it's, uh, it's just a shame. It's just a shame that, um, you would, you would pay for your sins when they're already paid for in full. What a tragedy, yeah. you know? Yeah, a life spent trying to pay for your sins, like, but it's all in vain. It's, it's crazy. Mm. Yep. All right. See, I want to mm. see it. <laughs> Go ahead, play. Same, man. <laughs> That's what we waiting on Doug anyway. He kind of fell out. No, I, jumped, I jumped in the car and moved up closer to the router. Oh, there you oh, go. Okay. All right, let's see. God willing, it'll be all right. <laughs> well, did I hear that? Then the fifth angel sang, mm -hmm. and I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them were given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find There you go, Thomas. Just and like you said. They desire to die. Yeah. Death yeah. From them. The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold. And their faces were like the faces of men. They had yeah, hair like women's hair, <laughs> and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots. 
with many horses running in the battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tail. Their power was to put men of five mothers, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew oh. is Abaddon. All right, we're getting ahead of the the reading, but <clears throat> that pretty much yeah. that kind of gives you a gives you a you know a little bit of a visual. Uh, mm -hmm. give this, whoever this guy is here, <laughs> give him his credit since that's his video. Um, obviously, it wasn't King James, but you know you guys get the idea. Um, just mm -hmm. a visual. It was that doesn't even compare to what it's really going to be like for folks. All right, I bet it's going to be a lot more terrifying than that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right, where are we at now? All right, so let's see. I think he left out. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So let's Eleven. pick up at verse 11, Brother Thomas. 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, and in the Greek tongue, hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four, four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. This is the sixth angel. So, uh, yeah, these, these are another four angels that are, Bound, another four fallen angels, like demonic angels, or which were bound in the great river Euphrates. Um, yeah, and these four angels, they kill a third of the men that are left. So that's this chapter is killed. Like, is that Doug? Yeah, I'm trying to mm -hmm. mute him there. <laughs> okay. But I think the previous chapter said a, th a third, or no, a quarter of the men were killed. So a quarter plus a third here. It's getting pretty close to half. Half of the mm -hmm. population is uh, a lot of dead bodies lying around. There's something, but I found it interesting. It's that they're in the great river Euphrates, which is... In Asia, I think, or uh, not even sure. I think it. Huh. Where is the river Euphrates? That's a good question. Or around the Middle East area, like Egypt, or I don't know. That's something I don't know. But uh, I know in Genesis it talks about uh, the river Euphrates. I because I'm reading through Genesis as well. I can't remember which chapter that is though. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty early on in Genesis. Yeah, yeah. It is in Asia, though, to answer your question. It is. Okay. Yeah, Western Asia. But uh, it looks like they're talking about Satan in verse 11, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but um, the angel of the bottomless pit, I think that's talking about Satan there. You guys know? Verse 11. Well, Abaddon it means perdition. Hmm. Right. So, yeah. I think it says Apollyon means perdition as well. Yeah. 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 They're the same same word. It's just uh, right. Is that was Apollyon was the Greek word, or was it the? I think it says it. Perdition. What does Webster say? Uh, perdition is. I can look it up on my phone, but uh, I think it means destroyer or something like that, or uh, perdition. Where's uh, that worst? I'm lost now. 
Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, Hebrew was ab 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 and bad and yeah, I, I think it does mean destroy. Cause I thought I remember seeing that somewhere. Now, now I can't seem to find it. <laughs> uh, and I know there's a verse in the Bible that talks about Satan being. Um, I think one of his main functions is to destroy, or lie, kill, and destroy, or something like that. So I, I, I would bet they're talking about Satan here in verse eleven, but. Uh, perdition means eternal damnation. Okay. According to, oh wait, yeah, Webster's, yeah, eighteen twenty-eight. Oh, well, another. And if, it, if it's talking about that too, and if it means <laughs> perdition, um, I mean, this could this this has to be connection. Also, I think I would think to like the the Antichrist whenever he is the son of perdition. After mm. after Satan enters into the Antichrist, mm -hmm. after he he has the deadly wound, um, I don't know. Maybe it could have some connection to that as well. Mm. Go ahead, Cody. My bad. Mm. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good, man. I, we all trying to figure it out. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of where I've seen it, but um, there's a cross reference on verse uh, eleven. Which kind of makes it shows you a difference between these locusts and regular locusts. Mm -hmm. um, says they have, and here it says they have a king. Um, over in Proverbs thirty twenty seven, it says the locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands. So regular locusts don't have a king; they just kind of do whatever they want. Um, mm -hmm. Probably like a like a in, like instinct, basically. These locusts here have a leader, so that definitely separates them from. It's not just regular old locusts, or right. uh, yeah. So, and as we saw in that that creepy clip, <laughs> they were all over. They were all over the place, man. Yeah. People mm -hmm. try to throw themselves off roofs, like Thomas was saying, and it was not happening. Mm -mm -mm. This is yeah. some wild stuff right here, boy. I feel kind of bad for John. He's trying to describe these things, eh? He's trying to describe these. Like, he's never seen anything like this. And he's done a pretty good job, but it's pretty scary. Um, but yeah, this is John uh, trying to put into words what he's seeing in, in heaven or, or what God's showing him guess, about, about the future. Did we read verse 15? Uh, yeah, I read. I stopped at verse 16. Okay. Stuff 16 there. Uh, 15 is interesting. The four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and mm. a day and a month and a year. Oh, yeah, to slay a third part, man. So it's like one was loose for an hour, and the other one was loose for a whole day, another one for a whole month. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, like <laughs> we know this is during the uh, this is during the second half, right? Second three and a half years, or uh no or is this the, or this no this is still the first the first half huh no i guess it would be yeah i'm not sure <laughs> yeah i don't know lost our timeline but in any case it, it, it just it's that's a long time for them no because it says only five months no that's mm. the locust yeah i'm confusing myself now <laughs> well in any case <laughs> that's some, uh, yeah. a lot of death and destruction um going on here uh, well, for this part, uh, that's a lot of people. A third part of men, and like I think you said, who said that earlier? That's like half the people now. <laughs> we done moved up. Yeah, there. <laughs> With the previous chapter. Yeah, it's about it's almost uh, it's about half, a little more than half, I think. Right. Sixty percent. I've never been good at math, but um, yeah, that's weird. An hour, a day, a month, and a year. Is it possible that? Each angel, one one of the four angels is only allowed to go out for an hour, one allowed to go out for a day, one that's allowed what I was, to... That's what I was thinking, yeah, like, one's out yeah, for an hour. Yeah. But it's like, man, That's why? a good question. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why, though? <laughs> I'm mm. sure they're just, unless one's stronger than the other, the, the one guy for an hour, because he's too strong, all right, man, stop, you know, like... 
<laughs> let, your, yeah. let your other your brothers go. I don't know. It's just it's crazy stuff. Too much damage in an hour. It's, well. it's, it's either got to mean that or it's got to mean you put it all together. Um, I would say, I mean, listen, it says, and the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for it to slay the third part of men. Huh. Maybe it's all together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm. One year, one month, a day. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like it stops at a certain date, but we don't know what that date is. Kind of deal. Date and mm. time. Mm. They can be sure of one thing. It's going to last 396 a days in an hour. Right. <clears throat> oh, it's interesting. Gonna it's going to feel like an eternity for these folks. Oh, yeah. Next mm -hmm. up. All right. Well, I'll go from 17 on. So we're in verse 17, and it says, And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Dude, how, after all that, <laughs> you still hard-headed? How stubborn can you be? Oh. Oh, it makes me mad, bro, but you know what? It talks about that strong delusion. <laughs> yep. they, and these are a, these are wicked men too. I mean, you you got to be pretty wicked. And uh, I mean, to to see all this stuff that's going down with these monsters coming out of the earth, out of the pit, and then seeing all of this happening, you're still not repenting. You you're still rebelling against God. Like what? Like I'd be on my face, bro. I'd be on my face. But I guess, like you said. They have that strong delusion. They'll believe that lie because it says I I can't remember what book it is where, where it says even even the elect would be this or even what does it say about the elect being deceived? If, if it were possible, if, if it were possible, yeah. Were elect, and that key, if it was possible, because we possible. ain't. That's right. Oh, I love that. <laughs> but that's how strong that 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 delusion is going to be. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. even if if it were possible, we would even be deceived. Mm -hmm. So think about how how strong that's going to be. Even you seeing all this just horrific things happening, you know, to your loved ones and people all around you and yourself, and you're still not repenting. I mean, that's got to be wow. You're cursed, <laughs> right? And they so yeah. It's just the stubbornness makes me mad when I. I mean, you know, we're all hard headed at times and things like mm -hmm. that. We were, we were all, you know, once in darkness. Sure. Uh, but like it says, um, verse twenty, repenting out of their works, of their hands, they still got their idols, their, you know, their gold and all this stuff. Their little little stuff that they be having, little statues and stuff. They ain't let none of that go. It ain't. And then verse twenty one, ain't repenting out of their murders, none of their sorceries, their fornication, none of their thefts. And that's why I'm saying, like, these folks, when they get before that white throne of judgment, they cannot sit there and say they didn't know. Look at all this stuff that God does before it's over to give a chance. How much more of a chance can that be? I mean, how many years right. has it been since Christ? Mm -hmm. You'd be even lucky to make you be even lucky to make it to this point. <laughs> now, see, now that's one thing I always thought about. If it were me, I'd be bragging. Yeah, I made it through the. <laughs> I made it through the whole tribulation. <laughs> what what y'all know about that? Well, I don't. I don't know how you anybody... walked off in the end. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know how anybody's gonna survive that at all. Like, where are you gonna go? 
they had to hide out in holes or there, something. There's gonna be there's gonna be some that survive it. I, I know that's what I'm saying. Like, survive, yeah. How the heck y'all manage that one? <laughs> you gotta be a good one. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it says uh, strapped up. Endure. Yeah, that's the operative word. Yeah. Endure to the end, tribulation saints. And well, the, and our Jewish brothers and sisters who are finally going to come to Christ. Uh, I don't know. I keep coming in and out. Sorry, guys. You're good. Um, All right. Yeah, I, I reckon the operative, operative word there. The, dif- the difference between uh, the church and the trib saints and the uh, I just watched a debate today and it had me a little spun out this guy was a, a fast talker and it was pre-trib versus post-trib and the post-trib mm-hmm. guy just made no sense to me uh, and I tried uh, to see where he was coming from but he was staunch on I mean if there was one verse that said uh, seven years before the coming of or the day of the Lord, uh, then I would believe it. And the other guy was like, "You just don't know how to study the Bible." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's facts. Rightly divide. Yeah, he's not rightly divided. He rightly handling. <laughs> right, and they were both. They both had PhDs in, in your. It just sounded like a a school ground, uh, you are but what am I type of thing type of argument. Mm. I'll I'll I'll, show, I'll share the link in these resources thing for a good laugh type of thing. But yeah, it was interesting. It's three years ago, but they've all written books, happens. you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So ever learning and never able to come to the mm-hmm. come to the truth that verse is scary man i feel bad for these folks you got all these like you said phds and all this stuff and and you still can't get it it's it's the craziest thing to me yep and then you end up looking real stupid trying to correct this book <laughs> you're too smart trying to correct this book and that book amen like an idiot amen yep like that verse I showed rapid. you. Oh, it was totally ESV versus King James too. There you go. Yeah. It's like that verse I showed you with the first John five seven, Chris, where um it says there are three that bear record in heaven. And the King mm-hmm. James says the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and these three are yeah. one. Well the scholars say, Well, the oldest manuscripts don't have it, so it shouldn't be there. And I'm like I'd hate to be sent before God and I'm sitting there telling folks, oh, I shouldn't have been in there. God, God had no control over what's supposed to be in there or not. Like, I wouldn't want to be in that position. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. like, I, I wouldn't even say that, like, it ain't supposed to be there. Like, God put it there. He put it there for... So you God now. You can just correct. You can just correct everything that he does now. It ain't supposed to be there. Mm. There, he put it there. He, re- I mean... It blows my mind, man. It, it, it really does blow my mind. And not really question if these people are really saved. They'll be trying to correct God. Because like mm-hmm. you said, forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. It's like you're storing all this information. Hey, I'll tell you what. Nothing like the good King James Bible to, to clear up a college education, buddy. Amen. Amen. Yeah, verse 20 reminds me of uh, Pharaoh's hardened heart here. Like, uh, these guys still, after all these, uh, after the sixth angel, they, uh, and like, I love the last part, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. It's a little, it sounds a little sarcastic to me. It's kind of like, um, he's almost like wondering to himself, like, why would these guys not repent? Why would they worship things that cannot see? That cannot hear, cannot walk. I mean, it's, it's so mind blowing. It, it truly is. Like um, when you were talking about, you know, you don't understand how people could like take things out of the Bible and say, "Oh no, that's not supposed to be there." The audacity and the and the nerve of people to to do that. I get the same feeling with this um, with the verse twenty and twenty one. Well, how unrepentant these people are. Mm-hmm. I, I, can't really, I can't really understand it. 
that's sad. Yeah, and um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Carter. No, I'm just saying it's it's the knowledge thing, and I've and I remember I was trying to quote something to you before, Chris. Uh, it was a quote from William Tyndale. Um, you know, again, when since we were talking about how these guys have all this knowledge and they still mm-hmm. can't grasp it, it uh, Tyndale. One of a quote from Tyndale was, "I defy the Pope and all his laws. Mm-hmm. If God if God spare my life ere many years, I will cause a boy that driveth the plow." shall know more of the scripture than thou does um than the, than the pope does or something it, or yeah yeah that's yeah. what he was saying and it's like it's the truth like i'm not you know i'm not trying to brag or anything you know i, I i'm the first person to tell you i don't know nothing but i'd be sitting here sometimes and i'm like you got these guys arguing over stuff that the scripture is very clear and i'm not understanding where the confusion is coming from right. <laughs> well i mean i do it's different bibles and and, and things like that but it's like yeah. dude, come on it's like the uh, I was watching a video recently about people that still don't know Jesus is God. My my six year old understands that. And my, right. and my and my ten year old and you got grown men and women, fifties and sixties still don't know who Jesus is, but claim they Christian somehow. But um, and just and they got all these books that can tell you why you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, all I need is this one, <laughs> this one book. I'm not gonna you know that's it. But anyway, go ahead, Chris. Mm-mm. And they be the main ones. They be main ones uh, running their mouths and and acting like they're just so smart out here. My thing is, my thing is, do like whenever, whenever I was, um, whenever the Holy Spirit convicted me of my sin, and uh, I started coming to the Lord, and I repented, and and, and you know, I, I knew I was just simple. I knew I was on my way to hell everything changed dude like everything completely changed like i i I was like almost timid you know what i'm saying like i do not want to mess i don't i don't want to mess with god in the wrong way at all let alone try to change Mm. his word you know what i'm saying like it's it's like where is the fear where is the fear yep no i feel you (laughs) if i gotta get in trouble we're not in trouble, but if I got to have a stern talking to you from dad, I'd rather it be something I know. All right. I really should have did that. I ain't trying to be standing in front of him because I tried to change his, right. <laughs> change his word up. Why, right. you know, that's the last thing I want to get up and stand before him for. And the fact that you told people that <laughs> that's one thing, if you thought it yourself, yeah. but you going yeah. around telling folk that man, shoot, not me. Right. <laughs> Yeah. It's almost like they're. It's almost like they're not even examining themselves anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like I know, and I I know y'all can probably agree with me when I say it's a daily critique of yourself. On, mm-hmm. I mean, because we all know that we're sinners. We all know that we're not perfect. The only perfect one is Jesus. So mm-hmm. it's a daily critique in, in our Christian walk to to make sure that we're staying on a good path and and a daily critique to uh, to even confess your sins. Confess your sins every single day to the Lord because you know that you're going to fall short every single day. I mean, it's a. Uh, it, it almost seems like they they just think that they're perfect, which is mm-hmm. a bad place to be in. You think you're so smart, you think you're so, you got so much knowledge that you're not even seeing the error that you're walking in, and that's a, I think that's a really really dangerous place to be, man. Mm-hmm. Instead, that you need to be on your face and on your on your knees every every day start a new day you know saying you're sorry for your sins and and asking the lord to help you to be better the next day but to me it just doesn't seem like people like that they 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 do that and that they critique themselves like they should i I feel like yep what do you think if that makes sense yeah no that makes perfect sense (laughs) what'd you think about that doug you there older uh, Who me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds another like frozen. another <laughs> loss of salvation. If your if your walk if your walk isn't proper, if your walk isn't like me, uh, then uh, you're going to be part of the sleeping church, which goes through the tribulation, and that just curdles my girdle, or it right, my makes goodness. my stomach churn uh, when I hear pastors say that. Uh, mm-hmm. You're, if you believe in your head and your heart, if you believe, 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 
if you understand, I believe so hard that I, I don't call it belief. I call it fact. Uh, but there's still people out there who are saying, uh, they're basically saying they don't sin. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Is what they're saying. And I know that once the circumcision made without hands, uh, once you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, uh, it's not that God doesn't see what you're doing and how you're maybe walk going down the wrong path or how maybe you're tripping up or how maybe uh, you're not making it around through over or under these obstacles uh, like you should be. And you do get chastised. We do get chastised while we're in the flesh because that's what a good father does to his children. Mm -hmm. uh, but far as far as our soul goes uh especially when it happens and by it i mean rapture by it i mean redemption uh he's only going to see us with jesus righteousness because we're amen. covered in his blood and that's a fact jack amen. yeah amen brother amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm. losing them rewards though I always think about that. I still think about it. Every time I mess up, I'm like, oh, what did I just lose? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just right. lose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, anybody got anything else? Yeah. Ain't seen y'all in a week. Anything, uh, anything new? Any praise reports? Anything like that? Uh, well, I had a I had a little praise report from uh from today, man. I went out, or it was right after church. You know, I went out to. Uh, I usually just tried to go out and see if there's anybody that needs help, or and this is nothing to like puff me up or anything like that. I just want to make that very clear. Um, you know, I I do have a hard time with going to witness to people too, and uh, I mean, not a, it's not it's it's not an easy thing to do to just bring up you know Jesus to to just random strangers but i did see a woman today and out at home depot she was sitting down she had a sign that said hungry so i went over and and i talked with her asked her if she'd been born again and and you know i just i just preached the gospel to her and and just told her that uh she needed to get saved and 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 she long story short she came to uh she let me pray for her right then and there and she asked the Lord to save her right then and there. So as far as I'm concerned, and, and I asked her if she meant that. And she said, oh, yeah, she meant it. So as far as I'm concerned, if she meant that in her heart, then she just got saved. So Amen. that's something that happened today, a little praise report, just to keep Amen. it short. Oh, that's good, man. And uh mm. got to find that verse. That, but it says that um, have, all of heaven rejoices when one sinner comes Amen. to repentance. So that's. Mm -hmm. that's a right there that's good amen man amen, amen. and i and, and you know i i gave her a track gave her gave her two tracks too not even just one and i just told her to read over you know and i just think uh in this time and that this time now you guys i know it's hard to get out there and witness to people and and to even spark up a conversation about jesus but uh that's what we need to pray for for boldness and ask him to fill us with his holy holy spirit so that we can uh we can have that confidence to go out because if you look anywhere in the bible where people were filled with the holy ghost what were they doing they were preaching the word of god mm -hmm. they weren't they weren't going around falling falling out mm -hmm. slain in the spirit or shaking uncontrollably and convulsing they weren't doing they weren't doing all that laying laying hands on people and seeing people's eyes roll in the back of their heads and, no that's not that's not holy ghost filled people when your holy ghost filled you're going to go out there and you're going to preach the word with boldness and that's what we all should be praying for um to do i think that's a if you go to acts four go to acts four real quick cody oh we're still on here let's see wait a minute i wanted to say for yeah go ahead i wanted to say for uh are you living your best life now Hey, get, out of, get out of here with that, man. That's what, I don't, <laughs> that no, that's why I like to ask people because even if they're on the, even if they're on the Olstein train, which mm -hmm. is very satanic, 
You know, you got that. I'm just trying to stem off it. You got to spend eternity somewhere. And a lot of people have, but it's, it's amazing how many people haven't heard about Jesus at all. Right. But unfortunately the, the Catholic church got a hold of a lot of people in their youth and they just gave up on quote unquote religion. And I don't blame them. And, uh, piggybacking off the, you got to spend eternity somewhere. Are you living your best life now? And that opens up a conversation. I mean, I'm not saying ask that to homeless people because, you know, how stupid would you have to be to ask someone like, I mean, that question. But, uh, no, uh, for some reason, I don't think it's that hard. And I thought I was going to get fired a couple times, even though <laughs> I just started working there a little bit. But, uh, yeah, when people take the Lord's name, oh, I'm like, you know my God? You know Jesus? That's a, that's a really good uh, starter right there. I like that. I'm going to start doing that, too. Very yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, that's slick. I like that. <laughs> right? Yeah, man. So there's there's a million ways to start a conversation. Uh, that's a that's a really good way, though, Dave. Sorry. Like, no, you're right. Like, I'm done. That, no, that's good. That's genius. I'm gonna start doing that <laughs> because people have people have foul mouths, dude. And you go, you go to you say that to them, be like, "Oh, you know my God." <laughs> mm-hmm. What a great conversation starter! <laughs> I love it. That's that's genius, dude. <laughs> right, but if we'll you see. go to uh, if you go to Acts four, uh, the verse thirty one, go down to verse thirty one. Oh. And I'll I'll just read it real quick. It says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So first they prayed. Let's see. Yeah, so first they prayed, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. So it shows right here when you're you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And this is the same thing that happened at Pentecost as well. What were they doing? They were speaking in they were speaking in tongues in different languages, but they were speaking the great things of God and preaching. Right. Same thing with same thing right here in Acts four. They, they weren't rolling around on the ground and on the on all fours barking like dogs and stuff like that. They weren't doing none of that. They were preaching the word with boldness. That's what mm. a real Holy Ghost filled Christian will do. The place was shaken. The people weren't shaking. <laughs> right. The place, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I, no, no. You're right. You're right. The place, yeah. The foundation was shaken. You're right. Not the people. <laughs> that's why That's why they used to call mm. them the shakers back in Azusa day. Slaying the spirit. The shakers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry, Chris. No, you're good. <laughs> that was good. You're right. I can see a charismatic taking this verse and be like, look, look, see, they can shake. It's like, but they're probably looking at their modern. I wonder what the modern verse is actually saying this verse right here. I really wonder what it says. You know? Mm-hmm. Curious. But, but I think you guys, uh, you know, that's, especially in this time now, we need to, you know, pray. Pray that the Lord fills you with this Holy Ghost and, uh, so that he, so that you can have bonus to go out and preach the word to the lost and, and try to reach them, and uh, mm-hmm. bring more people to Christ, man. You'd be surprised in this this time now. If people people are trying to act like nothing's going on with the, uh, you know, we're in a pandemic and stuff, but deep down inside in their hearts, they knew they know something's wrong, man. They know something's wrong, and if somebody like a, a Christian comes up to them and they start and you start preaching them Jesus. You're gonna and you start read and you start preaching them the word verses out of this Bible. It's gonna cut down to their heart, man, and it's gonna do something to them. It's gonna do something to them, man, because of the times that we're living in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The harvest, is, the harvest is great, but there's there's few, few laborers. So mm-hmm. we are the laborers, you know. We need to get out there in the field and uh, and do that, man. His word never comes back void, too, man. As long as we stand on the on the truths of this book, man, that he's given us, this wonderful gift that he's given us. We'll, we'll bring lots of people to Christ, man. So I encourage all of you. Yeah, and I, I think this is the perfect time because, like you said, with everything going on, people know there's got to be something, be- at least something better than this. Sure. Like this just shouldn't be it. And I speak to myself when I say this, but we can we can come up with a bunch of excuses on why we ain't out there 
uh, right. Chris know because I, I was going out there for a while, a couple of times, and then it was like towards the end of last year, everybody got sick over here, and that's been my excuse ever since. Like, you know, it's Satan will Satan will try to use anything, like, oh, you know, you got I got sick, and our whole house got sick, and I honestly I just got lazy, I just haven't been back out there, but mm-hmm. definitely these you know, past couple of days, uh, you know, you've been motivating me, so I know I'm gonna go out there this week, I'm not sure which day yet, but. I think, um, like you said, at least making it a point to talk to at least one person at least a week. Sure, I think that's yeah. an easy task. That's that's very easy. I mean, Paul was Absolutely. preaching, preaching in the multitudes, man. We we just got to talk to at least one person. To, you know, somebody you know, somebody you just meet. Um, I say I have no problem walking up to people and talking at all. You know, if it's about anything else, I get nervous mm-hmm. though when it comes to. <laughs> I do get nervous when it comes to this because it's like I know how serious it is and I don't want to mess it up. You know, we start overthinking everything, but. Sure. it's definitely the time and 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 um i know me and doug talk you know there's a whole it's a lot of watch times they like to say for the rapture let's say these people are right because a lot of people think it's this weekend um up till next week imagine they're right and we all just sat around knowing the rapture was coming and didn't help nobody else you know it's right. it's, a, it's a scary thing to think about you know I, I would hate to hear a guy say well how come you didn't talk to such and such um you know there's a chance that person could have got saved had you at least just planted that seed. You, you know, you just never know. Even if they, mm-hmm. even if they just walk off, you said something. You never know what people, uh, when they walk away, they start thinking. Man, you know that guy was talking about that Bible, and you know he just started. He, yeah. just, then he hears something else about down the road, and he, he starts looking into it. Man, it's mm-hmm. you, just, you just never know. So uh, I think it was it whose story was it Ruckman's where he met that guy in the military, and he didn't want nothing to do with it. And then he met him again later on. Was that was that Ruckman or? No, uh, I forget his name. It's a guy. It was a, it was a local guy that came to one of our my churches before. Um, hmm. He met some guy in the army that told him about Christ, and he wanted nothing to do with it. But then later on, uh, he came to Christ. And the funny thing is, he ended up joining the military, and he met that guy again. Oh wow! And he, and he told him, "I gotta look up his name." Oh, Raul Reese is his name. Raul Reese. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him, but. He, that was that was his story. Um, so yeah, you just you never you never know, man. You plant that seed. Somebody's gonna somebody can remember what you said uh, even a year ago. Hey, man, uh, man that, per- that person was right, man. I I must learn about this Jesus person. You know, you just never know. Mm-hmm. So that's my that's my nugget with, with, uh, along with Chris. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, I mean, for me, I mean, I was just uh, talking to my buddy yesterday, who's uh, a Catholic, raised in the church in the Catholic Church, and. You know, it, it's different talking to someone like that. Well, he's a good friend of mine as well. So compared to that, as opposed to talking to a stranger about the gospel, um, you're going to take different approaches, obviously. Um, with my buddy, I was just kind of telling him the truth about, um, you know, not taking the mark when the time comes, if that, if we're alive for that. And, and uh, um, But I would think for someone off the street that you don't know, I mean, I always try to ask some questions like, questions that'll get them talking i mean you should like i mean do you believe in god what do you think about god is a is a pretty standard question that'll get them talking and and i would say be be prepared to listen i think people are going to have a lot to say about it amen yeah um i always try to let people talk um and then um put in my two cents afterwards i mean i always try to let people know that you know everybody has the same three problems problem of sin the devil or satan whatever you want to call them and and hell like i mean sin separates us from god if you ask somebody what sin is usually they'll know they'll have an idea um and then you explain that that separates you from god i mean that's problem number one and problem number two is that everybody dies and you either go to heaven or hell like doug was saying you gotta spend eternity somewhere mm-hmm. the third okay. problem is is the devil that's you know, as, as true as as God, in terms of you know, God exists and the devil exists, and he's his main function is to uh, to bring you to hell, to lie, kill, destroy, um, and that's the bad news. But then there's always the good news, which is the gospel. That's what the gospel means. The good news, and the gospel is that God so loved the world, you and me, everybody, that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So that right, that one verse, I mean, there's lots of verses in the Bible, but that one verse takes care of all the problems in terms of sin, 
in terms of the devil, in terms of hell. I mean, all we got to do now is believe by grace, through faith, we are saved, not by works. So, I mean, it's it really could be a two or three minute conversation, but it could be a two or three hour conversation. And, and I would just encourage everybody to um, be ready for that. You know, don't go out. Um, you know, obviously pray before you go out and uh, trust God to lead you to people that he wants you to, to talk to. And yeah, like you were saying, Chris, um, you know, we need to have boldness. We need to go out there and, and tell people something I've been really lacking and slacking on doing. So something I want to try to do this week as well. Amen. Like you being Cody about uh, could be this weekend. I mean, nobody knows, obviously. Yeah. But um, just for the fact that it could be, I think we should all make an effort to uh, try to get out there and talk to somebody. Amen, yeah. amen. And it all starts with prayer first. That's that's the, that's the main thing we need to always remember. It all it starts with prayer first. And we see that what we just read in Acts. They prayed first and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they preached the word boldly. So mm -hmm. it, it definitely starts with prayer first, man. And we just always got to make sure we're praying up. Um, especially as Bible believing Christians, you know, we 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 know that it's detrimental, especially in this time right now. We're so close to the rapture. People are dying and going to hell every day, man, and um, it's just so detrimental right now. And we need to have a burden. We need mm -hmm. to have a burden for people, and that all that first comes with prayer, man. Get down on your knees, go to your prayer closet, mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily you have to pray. It doesn't necessarily mean you got to pray for hours on end, but Right. You need to get in there and spend some time with the Lord, man, and and just be Holy Spirit led, man. Ask Him to fill you with the Holy Ghost so that you can go out and preach boldly, man. So, Amen, Thomas. Amen, Brother mm -hmm. Thomas. Yeah, good stuff, man. Especially on the length mm -hmm. part. Uh, just real quick, I, you guys know I got issues with my back, so mm -hmm. I have a hard time standing for like over a minute or two. And I remember talking to this one lady; she just started going on and on and on, and I'm sitting there in my head like. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass out. My back hurts so bad, but I stood there because I want to make sure this lady know. Yeah. <laughs> and God gave mm -hmm. me the strength to, to keep standing, but I was in my head. Right. I'm like, oh, this hurts so bad. <laughs> but it's true, man. You, in you my them, head. <laughs> <laughs> you, you let these people talk. My and sometimes, oh, a lot of times, quit. A lot of times, that, <laughs> a lot of times that's a lot of them they need that they need to you know somebody oh snap somebody cares you know like it's mm -hmm. i think you hit the nail on the head with that one thomas because uh, um, I've, I've experienced that sometimes they, they want to vent they want to just let it out somebody actually cares what i'm going through uh you know things mm -hmm. like that so that's yeah. it <laughs> yeah amen brother amen doug you got anything man i see you pop back in here Anything you want yeah, to I seem to be. No, I think that was pretty much said it all. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get started on a lot of the. No, I think Thomas said it all. Yeah, <laughs> believe, believe, believe. Yeah, uh, that we could like, like. Chris said we could go for a few hours, or I'm sorry, Cody. A few minutes for a few hours. Mm -hmm. Who was that? Who who said that? I was in and out so bad. No, that that, uh, that was me. I, I was saying, I was saying, I wasn't saying that you, you know, you got to be in the prayer closet for hours on end, you know, but at least just make sure that right. you're spending some some kind of time with the Lord, you know. So, you know, put. Make right. time for make time for the Lord. You know, we make time for everything else, but man, we need to make time for the Lord and and get down on our knees, man, and pray and 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 be in fellowship with Him like we're supposed to as Bible believing Christians. That's basically what I was saying. Amen. Yes, He knows He knows our every thought, our every action. He knows every mm -hmm. He knows the number of the hairs on our head. He knows everything. Uh, it blows your mind how much He knows. Uh, but that reminds me, he, he made us for two things that I remember the Bible taught us is for his pleasure and for fellowship. And because we're made, we initially made in the image of God. And there's debate about that after Adam and Eve sinned, then the image left Adam. 
mm-hmm. but eventually uh when we're in our glorified bodies uh we'll be like him we will share in jesus inheritance which is everything and we will fellowship we will walk and we will talk mm-hmm. and right now his grace is sufficient amen yes, sir. And, and we need to have some heart to heart uh don't expect to hear everyone a lot of people here god told me and i i died and went to heaven and jesus told me and you know that might be true it might not but unless it happens to you and you're totally convinced uh then that should be i don't know between you and god but if it helps bring people to christ then god bless no that's a great thing um my thing is I can't believe I, my thing is I can't believe that because if, if even the apostle Paul said that it was unlawful for him to talk about what he's seen in heaven, who are who is this other person to what they saw in heaven if that really happened to him? Mm-hmm. The great apostle Paul wasn't he said it was not lawful, but yeah. I, I just want to throw that in there. Doug, my bad. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. nah, hey, like, that's appropriate. Um, yeah, it's a very personal relationship. I mean, God, and that's another thing that blows the mind is that God can have a very personal relationship with 10 billion people. Uh, he knows everything that's going on. He knows how many yeah. times the wing, the wing flaps for a right. fly in his lifetime. Uh, does he care? Nobody knows. I mean, maybe we, we don't, uh, we can't even, we can't understand God's mind and his, uh, our our wisdom is foolishness to him, mm-hmm. and the whole it's not our wrap, thoughts. Right, trying to wrap your brain around the it's we crazy, are also yeah. using ten percent of our brain. Amen, brother. Uh, I'm wondering what it's going to be like with a hundred percent or seven times a hundred percent. Yeah, no, I mean I take his word as gospel i think his word is truth i take his word literally and i take his word as the king james uh everything else just is confusion and god isn't the author of confusion so i'll take whatever he gives me but i know i know i love him and i know he loves me and thank you for all the blessings and thank you for the grace thank you for the chastisement Thank you for everything. Uh, I just want to know him better. Amen. Amen, brother. Likewise. Man, good stuff, y'all. Good stuff. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, close it out here. Um, I would like to lead us out into prayer here, okay? Sure. All right. Y'all just bow your heads. Father in heaven. We come to you in prayer again, and we just like to give you thanks. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for uh, shedding your precious blood. Well, first, Mm -hmm. thank you for just coming down to earth to show us the way, shedding your precious blood on that cross at Calvary so that we can be redeemed back to you. We just like to give you thanks for this fellowship and this Bible study and this King James Bible that you've given us, that you preserve Mm -hmm. for us so that we can know who you are and, uh, Mm -hmm. For, and to use this for reproof and to uh, to use this to build us up into the Christians that we that you that you called us to be mm-hmm. again Lord we uh, we just love you so much and uh, we want to do what pleases you we want to follow you and have fellowship with you and we just ask you always just to please fill us with your Holy Ghost so that we'll have boldness to go out and to go reach that lost person Lord Jesus we just pray that you just continue to be with us and continue to be in the midst as we continue to read through your word. And we just we just love you. We just like to thank you for everything you've done for us, for putting the roof over our head, closing our backs, mm-hmm. food for our bellies, and, uh, and food for our souls, mm-hmm. which is your word. So thank you so much for everything you do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
All, All right. right, guys. Thank you for coming Thanks, in. Good. We love. We love. Hey, no problem. No, no problem, brother Doug. Thank you. Thank you, Cody, brother Thomas, man. Uh, it's a blessing to have you as brothers, man. Amen. Thanks, Amen. We love you all. We all. We love you all out there too. Thanks for watching.